Welcome back to the Skyline Family of Companies Construction COVID-19 webcast. This is the second installment of the two-part series of Job Impacts. Hi, I'm Tony Fontanetta, General Superintendent for Ascend Construction in Chicago, Illinois. And I am Tim Lally, the SQP Director for the Skyline Family of Companies. The topics we're going to cover in today's session are sanitization and hygiene and the cost. So dealing with on-site procedures and new infection control measures. No matter where you're going to be at, there's going to be some form of a health screening, temperature reading, whatever it may be. The thing that we've chosen to do is we have a daily questionnaire that's going to be filled out by anybody who comes onto our projects. You can see the questions here, about five, six different questions, just asking how you're feeling, if you traveled anywhere, or you've been in contact with anybody else. We like this better than doing just the one component of checking somebody's temperature. One, it is easier, but two, more importantly, it doesn't put our people in a position where within social distancing, considerations of everybody who's coming into our project. Some of, some of the methods we put in place, uh, you'll see here on the left, we actually install the temporary sink with a hand sanitizing area as well as a waste can on the side of it. We didn't have any functioning bathrooms on our floor, so this was a way that we were able to give our employees a place to wash their hands and keep clean. Uh, also installed on these were touchless devices, a touchless faucet, a touchless uh, soap dispenser. That way we're not uh, spreading the disease as well as the proper signage throughout the project. Uh, sanitation wise, you know, we're going to need to increase our labor force. The site's going to have to be cleaned, wiping handles, wiping rails, wiping surfaces, lunch areas, and so forth. Uh, disinfecting, you're, you're going through those areas four to five times a day, as well as a, a plan for the building at night to be cleaning the facilities. Uh, getting a checklist, and this is going to be a checklist per job site because every job site is going to be different depending on size and you know the, the part you're in. So having it having a checklist, keeping a track of those checklists on your dailies. Uh, training your labor force. Uh, we had our laborers do the bloodborne pathogen, pathogen training. Uh, so they're they're up to date on those those current methods. You know, as well as having a disinfectant fogger. So if something does happen, you have the ability to spray that site and, and disinfect. In fact, we have a little video here we'd like to show you of uh, one of our, of Tim, in fact, performing a fogging operation. Of course, with anything that involves additional work, there's additional cost, and the COVID is no different. Vertical transportation, as we spoke about in our previous webinar, you know, you're going to have manpower movement, you're going to have delivery, and probably some additional security and operator costs. Staggered start times, if we're starting at 5, 6, 7, 8 a.m., you may even need to go to a two shift. So are we paying overtime for folks? Are, you know, some unions, it's, it's double time before 7 a.m., so you may need to look into that. As well as cleaning expenses, you know, we, we spoke the additional manpower to wipe stuff down, the materials and the time. Someone has to account for that. Someone has to pay for that. So lastly, with your on-site procedures is how are you going to handle a COVID-19 situation? I wish I could say there's a clear cut cookie answer that you could give every single scenario. There isn't. The one thing I will say is figure out who or what is going to happen when a case comes up on a job site. We have a task force, three people. 
that will be given all the information. They will decipher everything and they will tell our job sites what to do. Again, there isn't just a simple answer to every question. It's going to be tough because there's going to be a large variety of variables that play into the answer. Again, just have a plan before you need to use the plan. Well, that concludes our second part of the series. I hope you found some benefit in it. We, there's our emails again. You can email Tony or myself if you have any questions or comments or anything, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs>